Uh, I'm just going to advise all the attendees that we're going to record this meeting. So anything viewed in the webcam or typed in the chat will also be captured as part of the recording. Uh, and take it away. We're all set. OK. Well, brief introductions, if, if you guys don't mind. Um, sure. uh, my name is Dale. I'm a pediatric emergency physician in Tucson, and I chair the PACES committee. And um, this is going to be our breakout session, brainstorming session. Um, we had a motion in our last PACES meeting to establish kind of a work group on um, naloxone um, and how we might be able to um, augment um, whether it be outreach, education, current services, things like that. So thank you all for, for joining us, appreciate it. Uh, Julie, you wanna go next? Hey everyone, my name is Julia Vinton and I work with the Bureau of EMS as a time sensitive illness and injury manager. And I also um, oversee the EMS for Children program, which is um, oversees kind of coordinates paces. Yeah. Um, Shelly? Hi, everybody. My name is Shelley Bissell. I work at the Bureau of EMS and Trauma System, and I help coordinate the stakeholder meeting. Okay. Welcome. Thanks, Shelley, for your support. Um, I'm just going to go from the top of the screen. Uh, Jen Jones. Still muted. Oh, she said her mic wasn't working earlier, so she did introduce oh. herself in the chat. All right. Well, that means if you get voluntold to do something, you won't be able to say no. Uh, Jansen? Hi, I'm Jansen. I manage the Pediatric Prepared Emergency Care Program at the Arizona chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Thanks. And Dr. Bradley? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gail Bradley. I'm the Medical Director for the Bureau of EMS and Trauma System. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jordana? Hi, my name is Jordana Carpenter. Um, I am the family representative for PACES. Uh, well, thank you all for, for attending. Um, this is uh, pretty much, uh, as you can see with our agenda, not, um, not a very structured meeting, and I think all the better for us to be able to brainstorm. Um, as I mentioned before, um, in the last PACES meeting, there was a motion to create this breakout group to um, maybe discuss what PACES could do going forward to um, promote the um, uh, uh, naloxone use in the EMS environment. Um, as you all know, um, overdoses, whether they be accidental or intentional, um, have been on the rise, um, owed largely to the fentanyl um, <clears throat> that has been hitting the market uh, more and more over the years. and. Uh, um, Narcan administration, not only by the paramedics in the field, but also by law enforcement has become a reality in the last couple of years. Um, and I think there's maybe some anecdotal information and, and Gail, please feel free to jump in. Anecdotal information that maybe there's a caution or a reluctance of those uh, first responders in the field to administer to kids. Um, and whether that whether that is the intervention to be able to alter that behavior is educational in nature or more guided or uh, more defined directives, I think is the point of us getting together and seeing what we can do going forward. Um, uh, Dr. Bradley, do you want to say anything more on that or am I am I targeting it okay? No, I think that's a really good summary. Uh, one of the kind of anecdotal pieces that we have received is that there's sometimes a lack of recognition, especially in younger children or uh, in younger teenagers where it may be a known ingestion. I think there's just a different viewpoint when it's a pediatric patient versus, versus an adult with an opioid ingestion. And so trying to figure out how to tackle that specifically in the pediatric population. Yeah, and as as we're going into anecdotes, um, just two weeks ago, I, um, I uh, I'm on the child abuse service for my hospital system, and I consulted on a 14-month-old who was transported to the emergency department, untended, non-responsive, hypoxic, being bagged, and uh, EMS did not give Narcan. Um, a astute physician on arrival administered Narcan, and the kid woke up like that. Um, it was pretty remarkable. 
um, child needed a second dose and then ultimately was admitted on an Narcan drip and had a completely normal neurologic outcome. So it was a great case, but it illustrates the fact that um, that badness could have happened with any more of a delay to return to normal ventilation. Um, and uh, so I think probably a good point of illustrating how I would think speculating if that was an adult case, um, that patient may have gotten Narcan refill. Um, but because that person was a, was a child, maybe it wasn't recognized. Um, so uh, it kind of leads to that point of education. The PACES committee has created educational modules in the past, um, which is probably one of our bigger products going for um, retrospect and going forward. Um, so what I thought I'd do is take the liberty to show you some of the things that we have out there and maybe that'll stimulate some of the conversation. And then Shelly, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and try to figure out how to share. Is that okay? Yeah, there's a box with an up arrow. If you hover over, it says present now. All right. Um, Next okay. to your microphone and video. Screen. Okay. You should be yeah. seeing a, a PDF. Um, this is slide one of a presentation, and I'm actually going to go a little bit further into this. Here's our website, Arizona Department of Health, and this is the opioid page and the resources that are out there. Um, and uh, uh, any uh, Shelly, um, Julia, if there's more stuff, holler out. But this is primary site that I found things. So, you know, what do we have? Um, uh, there's a brochure that's available. Download also in a Spanish uh, version. And the brochure essentially looks at, and I'm just going to kind of flip through this real quick, um, looks at use and administration. And this is something that can be downloaded and printed and shared. Um, we have videos. Um, the two smaller or more um, advertisement related videos are the impact of life saved. Um, this is more of a working um, uh, demo video. It's an hour and a half um, on some of the slide set and discussions. It's, this is more of a taped um, work group. Um, but again, videos that we have available. We have standing orders um, that can be uh, utilized by the ind individual agencies. Um, and as part as of Arizona statute and getting behind the administra administration of not getting in the field. Um, also for um, AZ Post, Arizona Peace Officers Standards and Training. So we do CE as medical people, but law enforcement does AZ Post. Um, and this is their CE, um, CE related event regarding that for their training against standing orders. Um, Kingman um, was one of the agencies and areas that got really got ahead of this really fast because they had such a large overdose population relative to their overall county population. Um, and then their law enforcement agency got ahead of this. Um, I think you got, you know, was one of the first um, agencies in the in the state that that created policy related to that. Um, but this is their policy and procedures that's posted, um, and that directs um, what's required, um, the training um, uh, that's that's required, indications for use, um, and this is police officer oriented. Um, so again, some of the background documents and stuff, information for pharmacists and some of the reference literature of the impact of using Narcan in the field. Um, so from this website um, is the PDF that I was going to show you guys. Um, um, and this is a presentation about the use of Narcan. And it, you know, it's pretty extensive, 85 slides. Um, and to tell me if you want me to go slow, but again, I'm just trying to give you guys all a primer of what's out there. Um, we can all review this independently too. Um, you know, we start we start the learning module with objectives, um, background information, series, statistics. Um, you can see up here, these are all background slides. Um, again, learning module, I'm going fast, so stop me if you want. And then we start talking a little bit about the science, right? You know, what happens to the body, um, overdose, kind of the clinical manifestation, how it kills you. Um, and I'm going to jump a little bit farther to actually the products. So the nasal spray that's um, that in the standing orders is authorized for use in the field. Um, also authorized is IM dosing. Um, 
and uh, and I and I well I for the paramedic IV dosing, um, but a lot of the science background to it. And then if I can jump all the way to um, page. Hey, oh, did I pass it? There. This is the only slide that mentions kids. <laughs> um, slide number 51. It is safe. It is. But I, my point is, is that I think the information there is just not very robust on, you know, um, uh, what's available for kids. Um, and how best to tackle that, how best to expand that, um, you know, the pediatric dosing. Um, and uh, tell me if I'm going too fast, but it's it's an extensive PowerPoint. Um, if we get back into the standing orders, um, uh, let's see, it was the other one, I think. If we get back into the standing orders, it does talk about dosing um, and it gives some age breakdowns, okay? Um, there's not a lot of consistency in this, and you know maybe I Gail or maybe we could talk about that offline at some point. But but you know the dosing you know, for naloxone in kids is 100 micrograms per kilogram. So you know we can institute this pretty low, and the argument is is the side effects are so minimal that even if you're giving a larger than expected dose to um, a small child, the impact and the negative outcome is going to be null, particularly if you compare it to what's going to happen if you don't give the medicine, um, which very often is death. So um, it's my opinion to kind of loose, loosen this up a little bit, you know, maybe talk a little bit about the dosing specifics. Um, there is information about kids, but I can understand how people can walk away from this with a bit of caution. Um, Dale? So, yes, sir. No, I'm sorry, who spoke? Uh, Dr. Bradley. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I've been called many other things. Sir is fine too. <laughs> uh, it's my in, terms, in terms of the standing orders, so this one is uh, specific for uh, kind of the public. There is a the standing order for EMS is actually under my name, and it's a set dosing. So it's just kind of the full dose that is not the lower dose for pediatrics. Okay. So just just as there's kind of a few different standing orders out there in the state right now. There is. Um, this one from Dr. Villarreal, which replaced the one from Dr. Chris, and she left the state. Uh, and this is the one that can be used for the public. Then there's a law enforcement one, which is done by a, I believe, a surgeon that covers kind of all AZ Post individuals. Uh -huh. And then we have the one that I signed that covers any EMCT that does not have medical direction. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, that helps. Yeah. And, um, and so there might be some variation in dosing just because technically we don't have liability coverage to uh, as working for the state. And so uh, there may be different comfort levels regarding dosing as well. Yeah. Um, uh, do you find, um, Dr. Bradley, in looking at some of the different agencies, how they um, do this? Is there a lot of difference on how they drill down on this? Because you know, if you follow strictly the pharmaceutical pharmacologic dosing of Narcan in kids, it's going to be 100 micrograms per kilogram. So you're not going to reach 40 mill four milligrams of, do of a dose until you're at 40 kilos, which is going to be a, it's going to be around the eight year old. So, um, so the, for, uh, yeah, 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 I yeah, mean for, for the standing orders that are out there for um, so for an EMT, they are going to be utilizing the pre-made four milligram, which you can't titrate at all. So the child is going to get just a straight four milligram dose mm -hmm. uh, if they get it from an EMT. Um, to from a paramedic, they wouldn't be operating under these dosing at all. So uh, these are really sp very specific to EMTs that don't have medical direction. So like this one is the public one, but if you open the one for EMS, that's the one for um, EMTs. Um, but any paramedic would fall under their typical base hospital or administrative medical director's guidelines. Yeah. Um, and so those are kind of going to be up to the individual medical director. Gotcha. I'll, they, I'll open that up. I'll, yeah. no, no, I'm sorry. Keep going. Sorry to interrupt. No. So they tend to, I think most of the guidelines have tried to go more on the side of giving a higher dose, recognizing that we're not going to put a child into withdrawal the same way we would an adult who's habitually using 
an right. opioid. Um, and I did see Jordana's comment in the ch in the chat box. Uh, many EMS would use something like uh, Braslo or uh, Hantevi is another one of the kind of weight based systems some EMS agencies are going to as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm less I'm less worried about the paramedic who's going to draw it up and aliquot their dose. Um, you know, because it's if it's 0.4 milligrams per milliliter every milliliter per four kilos, right? So. I mean, you can really fine tune it, particularly if you have a three cc syringe and you can um, adjust as you need to. Um, it's these auto injectors, you know, I, you, I think you, you, you illustrated appropriately that you don't have a choice. You're giving four milligrams no matter what. So, um, uh, which, so the paramedic, I think having that freedom and then uh, you mentioned, let's see, uh, uh oh, did I lose it? There it is. Um, was it the standing order for EMS? Yeah. Yeah, so th this one defines it a little bit more. Um, and the auto injector is a little bit different. Here it's two milligrams per 0.4 milliliters auto injector. So and this is the one in the thigh, right, Dr. Bradley? Yes. So yeah. these are both the commercially available products. Yeah. And so there's, you know, what we've tried to get away from, especially for EMTs, is um, we have, there is funding at, that ADHS has through the Office of Injury Prevention uh, to provide free naloxone. And so we've really tried to uh, get them to get the commercially available products because we recognize that an EMT probably doesn't have a, a lot of experience drawing up a medication with a syringe, putting on a device, and then trying to either inject it or give it intranasal. Uh, and mm -hmm. so since we now have funding to help support the naloxone, we've tried to point them more towards the set dose that's commercially available. So it's very easy to train and use. Yeah. 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 How much liability do you think uh, would be? Well, I guess it's up to the individual agency, but for one to per Personally, I say use it, even if you know you're going to be using an excessive dose in a small child. If it's all you got, you, you use it. Um, do you think agencies are going to be um, receptive to that, um, that lax um, relaxation of the dosing paradigm? Or do you think that they're not going to want to accept the liability? You know, I think the the training that we've tried to give is that we'd rather you give the dose and potentially save the child's life. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a lot of data on harm related to giving a too high of dose. I'm certainly not a pediatric expert, so I'll defer to you on that deal. But yeah. I think there's probably more harm of not dosing um, than or under dosing than just giving the, the two or four milligram dose to a pediatric yeah. population. And that's kind of how we've tr tried to message it from the Bureau standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, and, and not to get us on too much of a tangent, but I totally agree. Um, I would fall totally into that column. The only exception being the neonate in that you can promote seizure um, if it's uh, if it's abstinence related. But um, but I digress. Um, I wanted to show you guys this because it's, these are the individual devices. If you guys are less familiar with them, whether it be intranasal or the intramuscular dosing here, so. Um, I am going to switch us back to our PDF here. Um, and again, this is the education module that's out there. And um, there's uh, one for EMS, and I think there's a separate one for AZ Post Law Enforcement. So, and I've seen different variations. You know, could there be a separate slide set being inclusive of its individual CE related to pediatrics? Or do you have a single slide set that incorporates information on both adults and kids? I've even seen scenarios in which, you know, you have a slide that talks about individual dosing, and then you put that little, you know, that little speaking bubble up there that says, but kids do this in like a pink color or something like that. You know, so, <clears throat> so I'm going to open it. Um, I'm going to stop sharing, and uh, I'm going to open it to the group. Um, for the open discussion as to what you guys envision, what you foresee.
who would be maybe just kind of prodding the conversation a little bit who would be amenable to creating a whole new slide set that was pediatric directed entirely maybe using the current one as a template or do you think that's too much do you think we should just add pediatric information into the existing slide sets I guess to me that would um, more depend on um, where you think paramedics and EMTs are in their comfort with adult Narcan. Is this something that they're using this PowerPoint and they this is a hot topic still? Or is this like everyone knows how to use it? Everyone knows the dose. It doesn't need reviewed very often. If that's the case, I could see making a separate pediatric deck mm -hmm. or even a poster or something. I, I don't feel like there's like a huge amount of information because they know all this from adults. They just need to know it's safer to give it than not. It's safer to give a higher dose than underdose. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's really just a couple of bullet points, but that's a really big slide deck to go through if they already know the majority of the information and they may not have an interest in looking at it or skip through it quickly and miss that that page i think that's a good point don and i'm i'm wondering that if maybe like we could add it into this the existing powerpoint just for simplicity's sake in terms of a training, but we could also kind of take that exact information since we know it's not a ton of information necessarily and make that into like a flyer or something like, you know, an infographic, I don't know, whatever, so that it could be a resource that it's just like, I look at this really quickly to like kind of get that information, but it's not a whole training maybe. So we have a little bit of both, like a separate piece, but then also incorporating into the yeah. training. Idea. Yeah, and admittedly, I mean, we're we're working under the auspices of Bureau of EMS and Trauma, but you know, first responders are also law enforcement, um, you know, and you know, at DCS, OCWI, etc. There's other agencies that, um, you know, as far as the layman population is concerned, can be on the field. So this is not just outreach to our paramedics; it's it's outreach to. Um, uh, to the non-medical personnel too, which I think the, their caution with pediatrics is probably magnified relatively to, to answer Don's comment. Um, our paramedics that we receive, they have zero hesitation given Narcan to an adult. Um, for kids, they're just, yeah, it's just, it's different. But now, now, now apply that to a non-medical person, like a police officer, boy, they're gonna be hesitant. And I, I really expect that. And to Dale's point, uh, I actually in a law enforcement agency that has been doing law enforcement and naloxone for many years, I reached out to me and wanted to get into get in writing from me that it was okay for them to use it on pediatric patients. So I think that hesitancy um, is really a big issue. Uh, and oftentimes uh, they're on scene at least five to seven minutes before EMS in the urban setting. Uh, in a rural setting, they're often there quite a bit of time before an EMS provider would be. So I think there's an opportunity to give that additional education to both groups. Um, so I would say it would be nice if possible to kind of add those pediatric specific teaching points to kind of both the, the law enforcement and EMT version. Well, being practical, I like to do the low-hanging fruit, right? I mean, why reinvent, reinvent a whole new slide set when we know we can augment the existing slide set? Um, you know, it might even be nice to do the, that flyer concept, you know, uh, maybe just take kind of a satirical look at it. And, you know, kids deserve Narcan too, you know, um, just to kind of get the information out there. Um, you know, a little bit of a flyer, um, and you know some bullet points of the likelihood of Narcan hurting rather rather than helping is is so extraordinarily low. Um, so you know again maybe a brochure, uh, but then we can tackle the slide set. What do you guys think about that? 
I think doing both is a great idea. Okay. I think we just named some homework. Um, so um, go ahead. I was going to say, if we wanted to kind of write out some quick points right now that we would want to include on the slide set or the flyer, I guess both are the same probably. I, we can start taking notes if we um, wanted to start doing that now or, I mean, up to you. Yeah, it, I mean, it's up to you guys. Do you guys want to take this, you know, take this into the corner and um, kind of email back, you know, slide X can have this, slide 50 can have that, slide 25 can have this. Or do you guys want to actually go through slide by slide now as a group? I, I want to be most respectful for your time. We can go through it now. I don't mind. Okay. Um, so as far as the background, so objectives, um, background statutes, Roots of administration, when to give. I think that's a lot of common. I think the background issue for the epidemic itself is very pertinent, but I think we should probably talk about some child fatality data. Um, I, I chair the Pima, Santa Cruz, and Cochise County Child Fatality Review, and we're gonna we are going to review four opioid overdoses um, uh, within that meeting alone, uh, which is about a third of our cases. So, um, so child fatality review data, we could add um, that information um, to that. Um, uh, holler out if you guys got something else you're thinking about. Thanks for joining us, Tyler. Thanks for having me, Dr. Woolley. Um, I think I mentioned this before, something we see at the hospital um, just as often is the THC gummies, the, um, some of them are pretty potent. Uh, I think 10 milligrams and kids eat the whole bag. Uh, they're not kept in safe containers in people's homes. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we see just as many kids going to the ICU, um, intubated, uh, the whole nine yards from, um, from this, I'd say more often because of the use of Narcan, right? There's no Narcan for the gummies. Mm -hmm. So I think if we're looking at the data and we're providing education, I think it's worth mentioning this. You know, the, these crews are in people's homes um, where they can, where they have access to more information than obviously they do at the hospital. So, um, I think it might be worth mentioning just because of the the incidence of this in the hospital. Um, I mean, I agree with you, Don. It's a big problem. Um, my worry is um, if we have a CE event that's strictly dedicated towards um, opioid overdose and Narcan administration. If we were to do a standalone module, it would nice, be nice to be more global. Yeah. But I'm, I, I worry that, that we would be distracting a little bit. Okay. Um, um, you know, talking about, you know, toxic ingestions in children globally, um, I think is, is, is information that I think is really important. Um, my worry, it's, it, it distracts. I don't know, someone else commented. I mean, with anything, with any overdose that's polypharmacy, when we give Narcan, we're going to unmask the other, the other influencing medications. So, the um, the sympathomimetics, the hallucinogens like THC. Um, you know, we remove the sedative effects of the opioid by giving Narcan, and then we can precipitate those other symptoms very often have a combative patient. Um, 
So I think, you know, side information is relevant, particularly for the person who needs to protect themselves following the naloxone administration. Um, Gail, you came off mic, were you gonna say something? No, I, I completely agree with what you're saying with that, Dale. I think um, the ingestion of the edibles of THC are definitely a big issue with pediatrics, but I think it would be somewhat distracting um, for this lecture because this is really specific to opioids. And I've actually, I recently had a, a PICU physician who referred a case to me because they wanted to know why EMS didn't give naloxone to a patient because they gave it to the individual and got a response. Well, the patient was very violent with EMS, which is not your typical presentation of an opioid ingestion. And they had essentially had a polypharmacy ingestion of um, amphetamines and the opioid. And so uh, the reversal of the opioid did not in improve the patient's behavior. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they had a, someone who four firefighters had to hold down now had to be restrained and then sedated in the hospital setting. So I think there's an opportunity. We do unfortunately kind of, uh, as you say, unmask the polypharmacy ingestion. So I think focusing really on this one, which is kind of when to give the naloxone with an altered mental status. And I think that's the piece that's missing uh, in the law enforcement and EMT training. We really try to, because it was so focused on adults, we focus them more towards if someone's just quote unquote high, you don't necessarily want to reverse that person and push them into withdrawal because you may get a combative patient. A pediatric ingestion is completely different ballgame because you may have a young child who is uh, going to go into respiratory depression or arrest uh, and they're not habitual users. So we're not worried about this combative stage or withdrawal. We're really trying to prevent the respiratory arrest. So I think it's a, a little bit different population that we really did not address at all in the initial training. Yeah. And Gail, I think you're tapping into something that I really emphasize when I do pediatric trainings is kids, you assess them differently. They look differently. Um, and recognition is a, is the key. You know, with a lot of um, EMS related education, we have the pediatric triangle, right? You know, how to recognize the sick child. Um, visually, what does a child who as an opioid overdose look like. Um, and, you know, a lot of this might just be because the, the paramedic or the first responder in general just doesn't recognize it. So when I, when I talk about adding slides, that's one thing that I really want to add is, you know, a, a appreciation and recognition, you know, how to, uh, um, how to recognize the, um, the pediatric overdose. Um, you know, what does a kiddo, a kiddo who's bradypneic, not breathing very fast, what do they look like? You know, um, what's the neurologic um, uh, exam like on an infant? What do they typically do or don't do? You know, tone, obviously, in the infant we look for, which is not necessarily routinely appreciated. So I would want to add some slides there. that deal I um and I think what we've suspected in the hospital is not even as much as not identifying it because sometimes they look very much like adults um presentation wise for needing Narcan it's just a comfort level of giving it so um so I agree like there's just a little bit of information to add there um so mm -hmm. I think we're on the same page um, so maybe a, maybe a dedicated slide on the side effect and risk profile. You know, what, 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 how are we going to hurt somebody by giving them too much Narcan, which might be possible, you know, if we're exceeding the uh, weight, weight based dosing of the kid. Um, and the literature is, it's almost unheard of, to be honest with you. Side effects of Narcan are just not there. Unless you have an infant who's born to a substance abuse mother and is going through abstinence. I mean, you're not really going to precipitate anything. So outside of the neonatal period, no risk, right? Um, so how, how, how do we adequately stress that in maybe a slide that we put in here? So adding that slide too. Thank you. 
Yeah, I think just adding that information that it's it's not going to be harmful to give a higher dose. Um, it'd be nice if we could go as far as saying, like, just treat it with the adult dosing if you have, like, the easy, already mm-hmm. drawn up um, thing. But I'm trying to look. There's an FDA statement um from february of 19 that just says all of the sprays um including the four milligram spray um were all approved and could not find any contraindications in pediatrics um without evidence of um any adverse effects um at this one um it comments on neonates um Yeah. Although it it just says it might be preferable to avoid uh, the abrupt precipitation of opioid withdrawal symptoms, like you mentioned, these kids that were uh, born with this. So um, I think that 100% is a different situation, but these kids that find pills or um, whatever, um, I wonder if we just kind of dig a little bit more um if we could get to that point where we can say it's okay to use the higher dose um Mm -hmm. instead of trying to dose it out by kilos definitely over 15 kilograms i think it is um you could use a pre-drawn up two milligram one there's plenty of stuff that shows that but it might take a little bit while a little bit longer to um really be able to support with literature using any of the adults pre-made yeah um dr bradley i think uh, law enforcement is primarily carrying the intranasal version correct yes predominantly there's i think one agency that may have had a grant for the uh, intramuscular auto injector but predominantly it's intranasal so to, to your comment, Don, that's the four milligram version of the auto um, a- applier. So the, the auto a- atomizer, I guess that's the better way of saying it. Um, so, but I still think you're right. Um, you know, even though the four milligrams is in excess of what, what you'd anticipate, um, uh, I think it's, um, I think we need to argue that the side effects, that it is safe, that it is effective. I, I didn't realize I was talking about, I was pointing out slides earlier and I forgot I, I stopped sharing. Um, so I'm back to sharing, I apologize. Um, but these are the, some of the slides that, you know, um, the other thing I would like to do is I would like to have the pediatric slides recognizable. So whether they be pink font or pink background, that when they hit a peds slide with peds content that they see it, okay, that's kids. Um, EMSC for children nationally uses a little teddy bear that when it's their material, they have a teddy bear on there. So we have them in the TTTGs as well, little teddy bears next to the pediatric pieces. So uh, we can do that in here as well. Good. And these pink slides if you want. <laughs> um, um yeah, and, and maybe we can all kind of hit the literature and just kind of comb through um, finding some published evidence that just kind of reiterates safety and efficacy. You know, a single slides with, and my screen is over here, that's why I keep pointing that way, but a single slide of little screenshots of all of these abstracts to show safe, efficacy, side effects zero, that kind of thing. Um, you know, just to really kind of promote the point. Um, Um, yeah, you know, and maybe some of these pictures can be swapped out and we can have pediatric pictures, you know, just to kind of maybe subconscious, subliminally illustrate the point that uh, this a pediatric is a target population too. So. 
I was just talking without my mic on, but I was saying Jen Jones put in the chat poster idea if squirt guns are safe for kids, Narcan is too. <laughs> Great couple. <Cute. laughs> So I'm just kind of flipping through these. Holler if you guys see anything that pops out. And uh, three minutes later is the standing order recommendation. So I guess that then it just goes into the products. This is the auto injector that Dr. Bradley mentioned. That's a two milligram dosing aliquot. We can add specifics on pediatrics um, CPR. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's our last slide. Any other thoughts? Anything you want me to flip back? Um, to the previous slide on or? Do you think it would be better to just make a pediatric section and do three slides or whatever there or do the pediatric information um, that goes with the slide like just next to it? Like uh, you do the adult one and then you click into the pediatric one and they're kind of all mixed in with the whole presentation. I that's up for discussion. Um, uh, what does the group think? I think it might stand out a little bit more as its own section, so it could be a little bit more memorable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think both, both ways could be fine. Yeah, I see the advantage of both ways also. Um, I love the idea of making it like with the teddy bear, change the font, or change the background, or something that signifies you're looking at a pediatric slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, how about this? Uh, for the best interest of everybody's time, because um, I know everybody has busy lives. Uh, maybe Julia, if you could scratch together this slide deck in PowerPoint format so it's editable, um, and then we all kind of tackle it. Um, may them make comments, annotate, if you want to email your comments or if you want to actually insert them into the slides. Um, <clears throat> uh, meanwhile, uh, it would be nice if we all kind of hit the literature um, and uh, uh, found some literature to support our recommendations. And uh, then we come back and we bring this all together and we we um, assemble a slide deck that um, uh, that we can start drafting up. 
That sounds good. Does anyone have um, any contact with toxicology um, through Xamer that we could um, reach out to them about the Narcan dosing, uh, the same as adults as well? Yeah, I can reach to my gang here. Um, uh, Maz is the director um, for Arizona Poison Control. Um, uh, and we have a a, a whole gaggle of toxicologists down here. So I'll just, I'll, I'll throw an email at them and um, uh, see if they'd be, uh, would it be okay if we had them join our group if they're willing to? Okay, you guys? Okay. Or at least they could review and edit um, with the same advice in regards to that. Um, yeah, they might have, if they have something, um, you know, that they've already looked into this. Mm -hmm. I think we can just use that information. If I would extend the information, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll and let me hit my colleagues. Um, uh, the either the toxicologists or the pharmacists. I think we'll get we'll get some definite input from them. I also work with Dr. Quan, Danny Quan, um, who's a toxicologist for the state as well. If you want, I can ask him as well. Love it. More input, the better. Yeah. Great. Nevada's website. I um, well, let me pull up the chat board so I can kind of paste that. Um, and Jen, tell us, oh, I, I'm sorry, your mic's not working. So um, do they have a slide set on their website? Is that what we're looking at, Jen? Okay. All right, I'll check it out for sure. Okay, um, so Julia, um, uh, do you want to take lead and command us to when do we need to come back together? Yeah, so I will create some distress slides and send them out to the group. Um, I'll probably put some headings on there just based on what we've discussed, but of course everything's up to your just approval or desire to change. Um, and then we can try to set up, set up another meeting in um a month or two maybe to come back and discuss what we have we can of course communicate back and forth via email to add to the slides and things like that um so that we can hopefully have a product by the next pieces meeting in november okay. um if that works out i'll go ahead and send out a doodle poll with the slides okay now i know the parliamentary process um it, it, it's stepwise um, but for PACES, we had a motion to create the subgroup that was agreed upon. Mm -hmm. So does that mean we have enough, we have freedom to come to the next meeting with the verdict of the subgroup or the changes already in place and saying, hey, this is our new product? Can we go that far for the next meeting? So for the PACES meeting, we would come to the group with the developed slides that we have. So if we're proposing to add, you know, three or four slides to um, the existing slide set, we would have those. And then if we create a slide or something, so we would have whatever our work group product is, we would be able to bring that to first the education committee, which is before PACES, and then to PACES. Okay. And, and you know, one thing that I was thinking that might be helpful is to include Amber Rice. Uh, she's the education committee chair, but she's also on the FR Care grant uh, and has been one of the main kind of authors of the training PowerPoints uh, for law enforcement and um, that's used for the grant. So um, 
I'm going to volunteer her to help assist. <laughs> that way uh, she can just make sure that I think that will help just get this through the uh, education committee. She has a really good eye when it comes to training. So I'm sure she'll be happy to help with some of those slides. Great. Great idea. Wonderful. And it helps that Amber's office is right over there. <laughs> so I'll just walk down the hall. Don't bug her. We'll, we'll rope her in. Um, okay, great. All right, we have our marching orders. When are we meeting again, Julian? Again, one more time? I'll we'll send out a, a poll just to get people's availability. Okay. Um, but like a month or two, a month and a half, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, and again, I mean, uh, and Gail said this also, we have Amber at the table, then at our next meeting, we can get to the education meeting for approval all that much quicker. So mm -hmm. hopefully this is something that we could actually get, you know, rolled out and and, uh, and use pretty soon. So, okay, love it. Awesome. Okay. All right. I, I got nothing else. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, and be looking for an email for me from me. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Nice to meet you.